What's up everybody? Welcome to Cars and Composites. Um, today's episode we're going to learn how difficult it is to start messing around with fiberglass and carbon fiber. Now a little bit of a disclaimer, I have zero experience when it comes to this kind of stuff and so uh, you guys are going to get to see that learning curve in action. Alright, so my original plan for this project was to 3D scan the part while it was on the car. So I put some scanning spray on the part and quickly realized that the geometry of this thing is something my scanner was going to struggle with. So then I added lots of those little dots. Lots and lots of dots. More! More! And doing a marker-based scan helped, but it still wasn't good enough, so I decided to go old school with it. We are going to remove the bead pillar trim and make a mold. All right, we got our parts out uh, relatively intact. This one does have a little bit of roughness that I probably need to clean up before I mold it because any of this painting is gonna show through when I do the mold. This one is in pretty good shape. Got a little bit of pitting here, but the uh, the left side is in by far the better shape. As always guys, I'll put some links down in the description for the materials I used. So for my first attempt I used this foam signboard stuff and it didn't work out too well. Zero out of ten would not recommend. The foam board had a paper surface so I had to cover it with packing tape to make it so that the gel coat wouldn't stick. But the biggest issue I had with it was uh, due to heat related issues from the exothermic reaction of the catalyst. Alright, um, something happened to where my video was unusable, but uh, just to update, I had a little bit of air voids behind the gel coat, and uh, if you look right here, you can see that, let's see if I can get that on the, the video, right here, the foam board separated from the part while everything was curing. We're gonna go with this uh, corrugated signboard. It'll make it so that I don't have to cover the thing with tape. And uh, we're gonna do high cuts around the whole part so that uh, there's no spring tension trying to conform it to the part. Building this flange was probably the most unpleasant part of the whole project. Um, it was just real tedious. You've got to make a flange all the way around the whole thing and you're cutting pieces so that you don't have any gaps.
Once you got the flange built, you want to seal up all your cracks with tape and fill in any little gaps with modeling clay. After that, I gave a good coating of part all number two mold release wax. Um, you want to apply it on there pretty thick and then come back after it dries and wipe it off. Kind of like a wax on wax off deal. Next I applied the PVA mold release. Um, you want to be pretty generous with this stuff, but not so generous that it's runny. After the PVA dries, you can go ahead and catalyze your gel coat and get to applying it. I think for both molds, I used a quarter pint of gel coat. And from the research I did, depending on what your working conditions are like, you're going to want to catalyze it anywhere from one and a half to two percent. Once the gel coat is set up but still tacky to the touch is when you're going to want to start laying your fiberglass. Part of the reason why I got those air voids on my first attempt was because my fiberglass mat was way too thick and heavy. So off camera I shredded up a bunch of it to uh, work it into those nooks and crannies a lot easier. Um, there's probably other ways of doing it but uh, this is just the way that worked for me. Then once I had a good base layer down is when I started adding pre-cut sheets just for extra reinforcement. Thoroughly cured. All right, moment of truth. I let these cure for six to eight hours. Um, probably could have gone longer, but I was impatient. Um, but everything seemed pretty hard. And After everything's popped free, you can go ahead and clean up the fuzzies and make it look a little bit nicer. Make sure you got a good set of shears for this. Um, don't fuck up your wife's. Well, the molds are going to need a little bit of cleanup just to get the PVA residue and the modeling clay out of there and probably some light sanding and buffing, but overall I'm pretty satisfied with how they turned out. That's better, much better. Let's go. All right, so this has been a little bit of a learning curve, um, but we do have two usable molds left out of it. Um, whether or not it was the right or wrong way to do it. You guys can let me know down in the comments. I'm sure this video is getting a little bit long by now, so next time we visit this 
project. We're gonna get these molds touched up and, and polished and everything that needs to could happen so that uh, we can lay some carbon down. Go ahead and like and subscribe if uh, you like the content and hit the bell icon so you can see how this project ends up.